Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. I've pulled up the numbers up here. Hopefully you can see those. Uh, it's right here on the left side of the screen. And you can see this is ISO 100. And what I'm going to do is zoom in. Okay. I'm going to zoom in right here on the little uh, TITAC. And you can see at ISO 100, wow. I mean, we're talking sharp, clean image. Let's pull up 200. You can see our our shutter speed went up <clears throat> and 200 also very clean All right maybe I'll pull over this and I can go even a little closer maybe 2 to 1 so we're pixel peeping here a little bit but you can see on these two they're very clean okay not a lot of noise Let's go over to 400. And at some point, you can see right a lot more. See this pattern, kind of grain, looks like film grain. You can see down here at 100, you can barely tell there's anything there. 200, 400, so 400, you can start to see it, some here. Still looks just fine. In fact, if you look at any old film shots, you see film grain at almost any size. But you do see it more and more as the numbers get higher. This is 800. One thing I should note, it, note to you is, depending on the camera, uh, your results will vary. So ISO 800 on this camera is better than a lot of cameras, worse than a lot of other cameras, too. The current leader, I think, is the Nikon D4. D700. Anything the bigger the sensor, generally, the better it does with this, keeping the grain down. The other thing to note, though, is when it was made. You get a nice big sensor uh, five years ago, isn't nearly as good as a a big sensor today. Okay, so 800. This is ISO 1600. And let it load here. There we go. You see more of this grain. And we're in pretty close. You should be able to see it at 100%. Not 1 to 2, 1 to 1 to 1. There we go. So this is what you're actually, this is actual pixels you're seeing. You can see that change, 800 to 1600. Pretty good jump. 400, 800, 1600, 3200. Okay, more. 6400 when we get up to these really high numbers we should see you can see definite some degradation in sharpness and that grain there now actually on a side note i really like turning these to black and white if you uh, need to shoot at these ridiculously high iso numbers and you're getting this grain go ahead and convert them to black and white if if you can because it gives you kind of that old style black and white grainy look. So this is ISO 12,800 and then ISO 16,000. Now I'll tell you what, shooting film, I never would have imagined even the possibility of going up to this kind of number. The other thing to note is this is viewed in at 100%. I'll just show you the uh, navigator here. This is what we're seeing. This is this piece of this image. If you're going for the web, and that's all you're seeing, man, also looks great. So if you down res uh, your images, you'll also see an improvement in noise characteristics by shrinking them down. Now I'm just going to show you one other thing real quick. So sensors have improved, and they keep improving. But on the other side, noise reduction software is also improving greatly, and it always is at the expense of sharpness, but they're getting pretty good. So I'm going to zoom in. This is ISO 16,000 again. Let's um, let's use the Lightroom's built-in. This is Lightroom 4 I'm playing with right here. Noise reduction. So we'll just turn this down up a little bit. So and as we turn this up, you should see these areas start to smooth out. Crank that up a lot. Now you can see it got softer. It did. Totally did. As we turn up these numbers, you see them smooth out. 
some of those areas. And so if you, depending on the look you're going for, this is almost a little bit dreamy. Um, but the noise reduction software is getting pretty good. Let's look back here at some of these other settings. Let's go down 12,800. You see the same amount of noise reduction applied. Let's uh, just toggle that off. On. Okay. So you can see what uh, Lightroom is doing just by default. When we turn this all the way off, you can see the red, the green. That's the actual noise your sensor is putting out. But just by bringing it through your raw processor, you get a pretty clean image. And it just keeps getting better. So we'll turn that off, turn it on. You see the amazing difference. Now if we were to zoom out on this, let's turn that off. Or turn it off. There we go. And turn it on. Oops, that's on. That's off. You can't hardly tell at this one, but when you zoom in, if you were going for a big print, this is ISO 3200. You can see how the noise is really pretty well controlled. That's a decent looking, we got decent looking detail on that. If we jump down here to 800, you would definitely not need to use this much noise reduction. But again, turning it off, you can see that there's noise in the image. Now let's go down to 100 just to see here. Turn off noise reduction. You can see how sharp it is. Turn it back on. So at the low ISOs, you really don't need noise reduction. So you crank everything down to the bottom. And that's why, for me, shooting landscapes, anything that I want to print big, I keep this ISO right in the basement, as low as it'll go. But if I'm shooting an event, for me or for whatever reason, guys, a little bit of grain or noise in the image is so much better than having a blurry shot. Especially when you're hand holding your kids up on stage, getting an award. You want to get your shutter speed, this one slash, this fraction of a second. You want to get it up until you can stop the motion. You want to be able to stop their motion, depending on your uh, style you're shooting. You need to stop your camera shake too. Uh, camera shake is probably the number one cause of blurry pictures and that's simply because we don't turn our ISO up high enough to hand hold the pictures. So I hope this little lesson in ISO was uh, useful for you. If it was, please share it with your friends. Uh, I have a page on Facebook, Reflected Pixel, or visit my website, reflectedpixel.com. Check out my galleries there. And thanks for watching.